All right, everybody, welcome to Wasm Cloud Wednesday for October the 20th, 2021. As usual, we want to start with a demo, and we got a great one today. Off to Alt Brooks slash Taylor for a demo of the new Wasm Cloud Helm chart. Okay, so we have this wonderful Helm chart. You To be able to access this Helm chart, it's still not in a host right now, because, uh, or a, what's that called, a repo? I'm thinking Wasm Cloud. Um, it's still not in a repo right now. We will put it somewhere eventually. And um, we're just trying to let people start trying it out right now. To, so to be able to use it, you'll have to just clone the repository and go into Wasm Cloud host directory. Um, and then you'll see a chart, uh, LSD. Wow, okay. So this is going very smoothly. Um, you'll see a chart directory that uh, contains the actual Helm chart for this. So this Helm chart has a couple different options. The, the three options are kick the tires mode, which is the default. Um, then you have leaf node deployments and connecting to an external NAT server deployment. Um, they're just two different deployment methods. If you don't know what those are, that's just fine. Um, you can take a look at those later, but we'll all show two of those. So the first one's the kicking the tires mode. It's as simple as going Helm install with Helm three, not Helm two, please don't use Helm two. Um, Helm install. Um, I'll just give it the name of Wasm Cloud for the release and we'll install chart. So you'll see this install. Wait for it to go to running. But you'll see that there's two containers in here. One container is the Wasm Cloud host. The other one is just a standalone NATS um, server so that you can just get things up and try them. So now that that is running, we'll go ahead and do a kube control port forward. Um, We'll forward it to the deployment. We'll do port 4000, which is the Wasm Cloud host. And then I'm going to go here and reload this because we had it, had it up from practicing the demo. And you'll see that we have the one host up and we can start interacting with it just like we would a normal Wasm Cloud host. Um, this is completely standalone. You'll have to forward the port and do all those things. Um, but this just shows that you can get it up and running inside of Kubernetes. Now, there is another, I'll go ahead and display the other one. I'm going to have to install it on. Um, on another uh, screen because it uses credentials. Um, so I'll install, I'm going to set this up in leaf node mode. Um, so it's connected to a, a bigger Wasm Cloud cluster, or so we're Wasm Cloud NATS cluster. And um, we'll go ahead and wait for it to spin up. Okay, you'll see that it came up and is running. That's the old one that's deleting right here. Um, so there's a new one that's running. So the nice thing here is actually, um, the scalability. Um, and so this is how we anticipate people using it because people have Kubernetes environments that they'll want to bridge into the future with Wasm Cloud. And this allows you to put things in your Kubernetes so that you can bridge that gap. Um, you'll have access to these things through Kubernetes and then be able to um, transition things as you write new things in Wasm. But you can also scale these very easily. So it's one way to scale very So if you're used to kube control scale, you can also set replica count on your on your um, Helm upgrade, but I'm just going to use scale right now. Hold on, let me just copy paste this somewhere else because I have to remember all the intricacies. Okay. So <clears throat> we're going to scale it to four replicas just for fun. And you'll see it spinning up. So we're gonna have four of them. It'll probably take just a second for them to all come up. Okay, so they're all up. So now I'm gonna do a port forward again. And we're gonna go ahead and hit that. And you'll see that we have the various hosts. The other host hasn't popped up yet, so it could still be joining, um, waiting for a heartbeat. But you'll see that we have the hosts. Oh, there we go. All the different hosts I spun up. Um, the, this is because it's connected to a um, lattice that has other hosts that are existing outside of Kubernetes right now. Um, one of them is actually Steve's host sitting somewhere. It's a Linux box. Um, and then all the other hosts that I have connected from Kubernetes. And so now all of these are part of the lattice and they can be scaled up and down dynamically with no additional configuration from the Kubernetes side. So that's what the Helm chart allows you to do um, with with a uh, Wasm Cloud. So there you go. Any questions?
stunned silence. Okay, I'll take that. Um, so everyone can uh, give that a whirl. Feel free to contribute any fixes or stuff. It isn't perfect. Um, it's, but it's a good start, supports those three main methods and um, people can start it out and we'll let people know once we figure out a place where to put it for, um, for long-term storage. Oh, that's awesome, man. Thank you so much for all the hard work in making that happen. That was a great demo and I love the doubling down on the Better Together story with uh, Wasm Cloud and all things cloud native. Um, I think it also lowers the barrier to experimentation. Um, so for orgs that are all in on Kubernetes now, which there are a ton, I think this is going to be very useful um, uh, for us to reach out. So we should get this um, integrated into the documentation and um, you know get a demo up on how to use this uh, very quickly. Um, but thank you. Uh, so open floor, uh, any other topics we want to discuss today? I know we've kind of bounced around a little bit. Jonathan and Kevin, uh, you guys were going to talk about the Lattice controller, I think. Um, Kevin, uh, did you maybe want to pull up and um, maybe see about uh, taking Jonathan to some of the next few items on the roadmap for there? Or uh, you can pull up and share codes, so you have something to talk through, or you can just continue to talk through it verbally, whatever you guys prefer. Uh, so I can I can go over some of the short term plans for it, uh, and uh, hopefully that will that'll clear up where and where, when, and and how people can contribute to the Lattice controller if they're if they're interested. Um, right now, the Lattice controller is really nothing more than a functional model for observing state in the Lattice. Uh, Part one of the roadmap is to extract that functional model for observing Lattice state into a new application called Lattice Observer that can be used by any other uh, Elixir project. Step two is the washboard or the WASM Cloud dashboard. Uh, currently it has its own proprietary state calculation from uh, event monitoring. So step two is to take out that logic and replace it with the same shared logic that's in the, net, the newly shared Lattice Observer application. And then step three is to uh, have the Lattice controller rely on the new Lattice Observer for calculating the observed state of a Lattice. And then uh, once that's in place, the next step would be to add the NAT subscriptions to the Lattice controller so that it's pulling events off of the uh, off of the WASM bus, and then write the reconciler, which calculates the list of things that are necessary to do uh, on a Lattice in order to bring an application from its uh, current state to its desired state. So that's. I know that's kind of a um, really, really, really condensed version of what's what's going on, but that's kind of the roadmap. Um, and you know, once the initial refactoring is done, where I've extracted out the lattice observer, um, everything else should be fairly stable and ready for contributions from anybody else that wants to. Uh, Janitha, did that make sense? Um, um, is there any more background that you need on the um, on this particular piece of work uh, in order to jump in? It sounds like Kevin needs to, uh, Kevin should do the next piece of scaffolding and then invite you in. Is that, did I understand that correctly? Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay. All right. Um, super. Can, uh, Janitha, any questions on the, on the, Lattice controller. Um, I think one of the questions that I probably lost a little bit on was um, like how to organize the code in terms of what part it would actually go into. I know <clears throat> that Kevin actually mentioned that there was already examples and I wasn't entirely clear whether that was from OTP because that's kind of where I've been looking to steal code from in terms of getting things off of uh, or using GNATs and not, but I, I lost that or I didn't understand it because I don't have enough context, I should say. Okay, yeah, I'm not sure if I understand uh, exactly what you're asking, but what's in there now in the Lattice controller does not have any NATS code in it. It's just purely a functional model. So yeah. 
that um, I think I can, uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't find any references in there. I, I guess the question was, to me at least, it seems like it can, I can probably add some scaffolding in, but I mean, of course, to reorganize it, but I can play with it still. Um, and to get the messages off of the um, operator into the lattice controller, which I think is a step that would be independent from what you're doing with the observer. And then that needs to get hooked up into the uh, apply events is kind of where my understanding right now. And I, before we were talking, you were actually correcting me on that. And you were saying that there was like a way that you would like it to be organized, which is based on the repository. And I don't know what that repository is. Yeah, so the, the repository that has an example of how to use configuration, environment variable configuration to uh, create the NATS consumer supervisor and the NATS connection supervisor is in the WASM Cloud OTP repository. That's for the, you know, where our OTP host runtime is. And so it's the, the same pattern that we use there for establishing our NATS connection for the, for the, the host runtime is what we'll do for the lattice controller for establishing its NATS connection. Okay. You, you're, uh, you're exactly right that, uh, the, the act of subscribing to uh, a Lattice's event stream and decoding those events uh, out of JSON, uh, that is something that you could definitely, or that anybody could definitely work on independent of the refactoring that I'm doing for the Lattice Observer. Yep, cool, thanks. Uh, Steve, did you want to pull up uh, the current planning board? Um, uh, do we have anything in Zen Hub we'd want to present this week? I know we're all kind of coming off of a uh, KubeCon and the 0.50 release. So if we feel like we want to just um, hold a week on that, totally fine as well. Um, yeah, uh, that's right. I was I I missed the um, call last week because um, I was traveling, but I guess you did you do the pets? pet clinic demo then? Uh, you know, I don't know that we've done the pet clinic demo on here. Uh, we probably want to do that at some point, uh, but it, I don't think anybody's ready to do it right now. Uh, we did okay. do it on the 0 0.50 release. So actually we probably have a, a decent version of that out in recording and Jordan did move that over to our YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, so um, yeah, I'll, I'll just say we're going to be doing a bunch of road mapping next week. So uh, there'll be some new new roadmap info coming soon. Well, um, anyone else uh, have anything they wanted to raise? Uh, Kevin? No, I'm all set. Okay, Brooks, anything? I don't think I have anything. I was I would consider bringing up the, um, you know, some of the things about how we're improving the, the CICD. Um, but I, I think that that might be cooler to do as a demo, perhaps running like the ARM Linux Docker image. Um, so maybe we can do that next week. Okay. All right. That sounds great. Well, I guess, uh, Janet, do you have anything you wanted to bring up beyond the conversation on the lattice stuff? No, I'm good. Thank you. All right. Well, I think that wraps us up for today. Thank you, everyone, so much for another great Wasm Cloud Wednesday. We'll see everybody next week. I'll stop recording and we can hang out as usual.